Kali Linux is installed on your Raspberry Pi, uh, but you want to access it remotely. Uh, with this video, I'll uh, go over in detail on how you can do that uh, by installing a, a specific program that you can use to access your Raspberry Pi remotely. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up a terminal. Uh, I made the font size a little larger so you can see it better. And you want to make sure everything's up to date. So apt get update. Uh, the program that we are going to download is uh, X11 VNC. And the default repositories need to be updated uh, before you can actually install it. Alright, so it's all updated. Uh, now what we want to do is uh, we want to install the actual program that we're going to be using. Um, so apt get install x11 vnc. Now I already have it installed so it's just going to let me know that I already have the newest version. Alright, so now that you have x11 vnc installed on your machine, uh, the first thing you want to do is actually set a password so that when you access it remotely, uh, a password will be required to log in. And to do that, just type in x11 vnc dash store password. And then it's going to ask you to enter a password. And then you got to verify it. And then it stores the password, and we say yes, and that is finished. Um, so now after your password is set up, um, basically you can just uh, run it and see if you can log into it. Um, but you want to run um, a few command lines first to get started. So you can just type in x11vnc-ncache. Um, and what the uh, the end cache does is it caches screen content for rapid retrieval. Uh, so your screen might, um, I mean, mine lags a little bit, but I mean, it might help out a little bit if you if you use that. And what NAP does is uh, it monitors your, uh, monitors your activity, and then if the activity is low, then it will take a nap. And forever means that it's going to listen for more connections when the first client disconnects. And loop restarts the process if it terminates. Now we're going to let it know where the password is located. And what port we are going to use. And then that's it. And then you just press the enter button and that will start up X11 VNC. Um, it's already running on my machine so I am not going to press the enter button. Uh, so now that X11 VNC is actually running, we can attempt to connect to the Raspberry Pi itself um, and in order to do that you have to download a program uh, you can just type uh, VNC viewer download and your uh, Google Chrome and then realvnc.com and then you select which operating system you have and then you can download it right here by clicking the button and then select whether or not you know, 64 or 32-bit operating system and then after that is installed, you can go ahead and open up the program itself. And when you open the program, it's going to give you this uh, little box here. And then you just type in your IP address, followed by the port, which is 5900, which we already established. If you don't know your IP address, then you can run a simple command to find that. You can just run if config. IFCONFIG, and then that will bring up um, your IP address, which is located right there. 
192.168.2.5. And that's what we entered here, followed by the port number. And then you just click the connect button. After you hit the connect button, it will uh, ask you for a password, which is the password that you've already created. And then when you log in, it should just bring you to the login screen. And then you log in as a root, and then put your password in, and then, and then your desktop would show up. So that is how you would access your Raspberry Pi remotely. Um, but the thing is, is you would have to enter in them. Uh, so you'd have to enter in these uh, command line options. Uh, but you'd have to enter these every time that you log in uh, to Kali Linux. But what if you don't want to do that? Or what if you don't have the options to actually log in every time? Uh, well, we can actually set it up so that it will automatically run every time Kali is booted up. And in order to do that, uh, we actually need to create a separate file. And we will navigate to... Um, and then this is the document that you want to actually create. I already created it. Um, so in order to create it, you would navigate to um, user local bin and then type in nano share x11 vnc. And then it would create a new file for you. I already have it created here. And then essentially you just want to put in this information here and then save it by pressing control X now I will provide this text in the description below because um, it would be a lot easier for you just to copy and paste rather than just seeing it on the screen here uh, we do want to set permissions on that file that we just created though All right, so we set our permissions. Now we want to set it up so that it auto starts. And in order to do that, just go to Applications, Settings, and then Session and Startup. And then if you click on Application Auto Start, I mean, as you can see, I already have it set in my uh, uh, Session and Startup here at X11 VNC. And so if you wanted to add um, a VNC to your session in startup, you would just have to click the add button. You would type in the name, which I put in VNC viewer as the name. Um, the description, you can type in uh, whatever description you want. And then the command itself, you would type in X11 VNC. And then you click the OK button, and then it'd save it here. And then you would uh, obviously uh, save and close this out and make sure that that is set on auto start. And then another um, thing you could download and install here, which would prove to be uh, kind of beneficial, would be uh, apt get. install auto cut cell um, now what this program does is it's uh, used to copy text between applications um, so if you're running uh, VNC viewer on one screen and then you have your desktop that you're doing stuff on the other screen and you want to copy text or a script or something and you want to paste it into your VNC viewer then it'll allow you to do so so you can just go apt get install uh, I mean, I already have it installed, so it's not going to install it again for me. And then you actually want to auto start that as well. So you'd go back in applications, settings, session and startup, 
application auto start and as you can see it's already there on my list as well now if you wanted to add that you'd click the add button type in uh, the name you can give it any name you want a uh, description any description you want as well uh, the command line here the command is pretty important though this has to be correct so you just type in auto cut cell a u t o c u t s e l and then you just click the OK button, save it, and then make sure that it is checked and added to your application auto start. I mean, if you have any troubles or questions, um, you know, feel free to comment below.